It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. fine morning after some good rain showers. And we are going to go back in the studio and um, do some more with Suminagashi. But I hear I hear voices out here. I hear I hear somebody. There's somebody across the way there. Oh look. Looks like um Looks like two professional birders. Yeah, the sap suckers. I don't see them yet. Oh, here they are. Oh, look. Hey, speaking of birding. See that little uh, cavity in the tree there? That's where the, the red-naped sapsucker is nesting here. There she is. It's actually my husband and neighbor and the dog. They're out birding this morning. We'll see if we can get closer to them. Anyway, we're heading back to the studio for a little work with the ink and paper and wind and water. I'm going to do some more suminagashi. I think I'll introduce you to a, a method I'm going to call charoscuro. There go our birders.
pleasantly breezy today. I'm noticing how it's blowing these sarsaparilla leaves around ever so gently. The sarsaparilla is one of our bigger leaves out here in the spruce forest. Uh, some of the tiniest are, are of these twin flowers. The leaves of the twin flowers, they kind of um, creep and crawl across the ground. And they're just starting to bloom. Well, we're, we're back here in the studio, and um, as I said a little bit ago, we're going to be working with uh, another advanced technique for making suminagashi papers. We're continuing with our explorations of wind and water, and, and I'm Mary Whip. I'm your virtual visiting artist with Sanford Arts. And I was just looking up a couple of definitions. I, I have actually pretty clear recollections of, of hearing um, two words back when I was studying art history. And I thought I would share, with, share them with you. I think they are uh, pretty good words to apply to what we're looking at today. The first word is chiaroscuro and that's actually two Italian words put together. Chiaro means light, and oscuro means dark. So in chiaroscuro, uh, we're looking at kind of a, a balance or interplay between darks and lights. If you think about uh, Rembrandt's, the Dutch artist, the Dutch master Rembrandt's paintings, that's a, a strong element in his works. Um, and I will show you some pictures of his just to kind of remind you of that, of what, what those look like. Um, the other artist that comes to mind um, from history would be um, um, Da Vinci, and I guess the the word that I want to use um, relative to his paintings is sfumato, and sfumato refers to kind of a a real smooth blending from light to dark or dark to light. So if you think of the the very famous painting, the Mona Lisa. Um, the darks and lights in the face are, are blended very smoothly, so there's kind of an even transition between the darks and lights. It almost gives the, the face kind of a misty look. So, um, chiaroscuro, great word, and sbumato, another one. Um, those are, are the, the things we're thinking about today as we do our suminagashi. And today, once again, I have out the big tank just for the fun of it. And um, we'll, we'll get going. Let's get some ink out. I'll do a brief review of the materials. 
Uh, they're pretty much what we've been using. I am using the big tank today. And um, so for the big tank, of course, I need um, big sheets of paper. And um, today I'm using mainly uh, paper that you can't buy anymore. <laughs> How's that? Um, but you know, if you know an old art teacher, <laughs> you might be able to get your hands on some of this old speedball block printing paper, but, but probably not. So um, I do happen to like this paper, and I still have some because I, I bought a lot. Um, some time back, but I'm also going to recommend, um, well, really any kind of rice paper, but this is a great one that you can get pretty easily. It's called Okawara, and I want to say this is a 12 by 16 sheet or something like that. So I'll, I'll have references for you later in the video again, of where you can get your supplies, but the main thing is that you have a paper that's that's strong when it's wet. And then, of course, we'll be using our Boko Undo marbling colors, and to make them float, we're adding the same surfactant that we did before. Um, now, I am going to uh, try out a brush I haven't used before. Um, some friends brought this back to me from China when they were visiting there. Great big thing. Um, and so I'm going to see how it works. I have my, my backup brush, my old trusty, in case this one is just too much. But you can see it's a, a pretty big brush. And I'm just dampening the bristles and then smoothing it out into a point. I guess I already had, you know, when these brushes are new, they, they come starch, so I had already washed out the starch. But I want to kind of smooth that into a nice little point. And maybe I'll just do the same with this one in case I end up using it. And then I, I have another palette here today. I chose this one just because it's got um, deeper wells and it holds more more ink and basically our color scheme today is going to be what we call monochromatic meaning one color and I think I'll just start with blue since we got nice blue skies today and it's not that I need so much of the blue ink you know, the reason for these deep wells, it's that I need a lot of clear, so I'm going to fill this well up with water using my eyedropper, and then I'll add my surfactant. I have a little more blue than usual, so I might put a couple drops in that, and then I'm going to just add quite a bit to my clear and I can gauge as I go if I need to add more if it's not spreading out enough well then I'll I'll add more later and I also have I've got lots of newspapers spread out on the floor beside me I've got a nice steady table and then I've got some newspaper strips which I will use to skim the surface so surface tension is when the molecules kind of organize in close tight formation on the surface and they're taking up space that would prevent the color from flowing across the surface. So I want to disrupt that skin of molecules before I try applying color. Um, and I think I will just go ahead and get a little blue on my big brush. That's going to be fun. And then I'll go ahead and skim. I, I folded this in half. I generally want it a little longer than my tank is wide. And I'm going to reserve this dry part that I've got standing up like a little fence. So I'm drawing it across the surface 
and then at the end I can lay that down flat and that that absorbent newspaper will soak up um, the skin and if I had ink on there it would soak some of that up. <laughs> I can kind of pick out the dog hair that I see in there. Maybe I'll skim again. Let's just give that another another go around. Like so. And then I'm ready for my ink. So with the Charoscuro, what I'm going to be doing, I think I need more ink in the, this. This is going to be one thirsty brush. There we go. Um, so I'm going to be diluting the blue that I have in here now with the water so that each time since I've never used this brush before this will be interesting um, I think I need one of my paper towels okay. so the the dark blue that you see in there is sunk ink it's not floating I'm just going to do this so that visually it doesn't confuse you. Okay. So I'm going to be one, using one color and then each time I'm going to add more of my clear to it. And so you can see it blending from light to dark. Like spumato. <laughs> and I'll do that again. So there's still blue in here, and then when I dip it in the clear, it starts out as clear, and then gradually, as I milk my fingers down the brush, it becomes darker and darker. Dipping in the clear, and gradually squeezing it out. And I'm just going to continue doing that. <laughs> I probably could have warmed up with the the brush I'm familiar with. Plus, so that that's just sunk to the bottom. Actually, I think I'll just show you a little trick here. I can use my eyedropper maybe and just suck that out a little bit. And it's not that that is going to come off on the paper by any means, but it might just be a little hard to look at. And then I'll continue with my clear blending out into blue. We'll just try that with the other brush and see, see how that goes. So now it's pretty light, so I'm now I'm going to go back to the, the dark blue. And maybe I'll wish that I had just started with this one anyway. And then after the first spot or two, I just want to add clear to my brush. And I tell you what, one of the most wonderful things about Suminagashi is that the process becomes a steadying force in the maker. Today that's me. So sometimes when I sit down I feel a little chaotic. And the medium just kind of gets me calmed down and in a groove, refocused, and probably I'm demonstrating that pretty well today because, you know, things might not seem right to begin with, and that's okay, 
as we move forward it will come around and everything will be all right. Might take a few sheets. So each time I add a spot, I've also added in some of my clear. And that way it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And I'm going to try to gently <laughs> remove that spot from the bottom of the tank so that you can kind of see better what I'm what I'm making so big tank lots of ink lots of surfactant If you hear a stomping noise, it's my horses down below me. So let's have one more go around of this. First the full strength color, and then each time adding clear to my brush and squeezing. and breathing and settling into the process. So um, I can fan this. Um, if I choose I could also blow it into a mirrored landscape, which I kind of think I'd like to do. Again, I'll show you these again when they're dry. Um, and this can be done with any color. Um, I'll do some that are monochromatic first, and then I will um, do a few that have um, multiple colors in them. I think I'll just put one drop in that red. Remember, I want to have, um, at least in the full strength parts, I want to have um, not pink. I'm looking for my eyedropper. And I'll, woo, <laughs> I'll go ahead and take some water out of my, my tank. Um, that this looks a little blue shall not be a problem. I'm going to add lots of surfactant to that. Like pretty much a whole eyedropper full. And then I'm going to skim. Well, I guess I could leave that on there. But I think I'd rather take it off. Here. 
having trouble finding my skimmers. Here they are. I think I'll do this in two parts with this big tank um, that's so much ink that it starts to sink if I push it all over to the end. So I took some off with that skimming and I think I can take off the rest with this. Sinking ink. Um, you know, this little bit over here that you can see. Um, if it's down under the surface, it's not going to come off on your paper. So let's take up some red, and I'm just going to let the blue in my brush, you know, there's very little of it, but I'm going to just let it stay in there. And now each time I place a spot, I'm dipping it in the clear and then milking the brush, just running my fingers down the bristles. So each successive spot gets lighter and lighter. So we're moving from dark to light. And we even got a little blue there. And then once I'm very light, <clears throat> I'm going to add in just again the full strength red. And since there is a little bit of red in my brush, each time I add water, you can see this lovely spumato the smooth transition from light to a darker color. And overall, I have a chiaroscuro, <laughs> kind of like that word, that's just the um, back and forth between light and dark. So again, I'm, I'm about out of clear, so I'll add in again now just my full strength red. And then gradually start adding the clear to it. So each spot I dip into my clear and milk down the brush with my fingers. Like so. Going into the red again. And on. And I think that might be all I need there. Um, and I'm just going to keep blowing in a mirrored landscape. Because I like it. <laughs> breathing in and
time maybe I'll just leave what's left over on here in place and um, try this in a little different way. I'll put in um, three points where I'll begin with full strength and then proceed always adding in those three locations. hear that roar? It's the sound of a B-1 bomber flying over. And I'm going to go into the red again. And then adding the clear. This time I'm just going to leave them where they are. I am going to fan. If you haven't noticed already, the, the fan fluttering over it kind of um, crinkles and wrinkles the lines. Gives them that beautiful elegance only found in Suminagashi. See, I chose to put my paper down a little bit closer to this end. Just happened to like what was happening there uh, the most. So we'll pull that out. And there we have it. So how about we try one with a multi a multicolored scheme? Let's do some yellow. Should we do all the colors? Get a little more red in here. So while I am going to use more than one color now, I am sticking with the pattern of successively lightening the bands. Um, I think while I'm at it here, I might as well put in some more water to my clear. And I'll add my surfactant, lots to the clear. Um, let's see, I think, oh gosh, I don't have any in the yellow yet. 
And then black, remember, it usually needs a little more, so let's put three drops in that. Oh, and I believe I added red, so I'll put one more drop in there. And then I'll skim. Once again, I'm going to do that in two parts just because there's a lot of ink on there. You can see it gathering up here. If it gets too concentrated, it, it starts to sink, so I will not push it. And a little did sink anyway. And that's okay. Just kind of stir it in so it's not a visual obstacle. I have an idea. Let's do... I'm going to mix the blue and red to get a violet on my next set. So, take a little bit of each. And then move into my lighter bands. Each time adding a little more of the clear. And once I feel like it's quite light, then I can move into my next color. So to review those words, the, the charoscuro is the um, interplay of light and dark, and spumato is that gentle, smooth, blended gradation from light to dark. And the yellow, that's a pretty light color to begin with, but it, it does still work. Let's, let's move on to green. So you see it starts out really light, and then as I squeeze more, I get more of the green ink in there. There's the blending from light to dark. And you know, I, I haven't used the black, but I don't think I will on this one. It's too colorful for black. Let's do a mirrored landscape on this.
something tells me that this paper is different. <laughs> oh my gosh. Somehow in my stack there was a non... <laughs> oh, so this might not have um, absorbed the way it should have. So I'm expecting my ink to kind of be blurry and runny, maybe. Let's see. I think a lot of it's going to wash off. Yeah. Huh. And I'm not sure how that happened. I guess we'll go with the flow. Hmm. That's, that's pretty weird. So that was in a stack of paper that I bought like 25 years ago. And it's not the paper that um, is in the package. Well, um, perhaps we'll try that again. Let's see, I've still got all my colors. Again, the color in the tank, that bluish haze in there, that's not going to um, not going to come off on my paper. So when I skim, I'm just cleaning off the surface. Anything that's floating is going to get trapped over here on the end and absorbed by the newsprint. Alright then, let's, let's try that again. Hear the horses? And I know my clear ink here looks kind of dark, but um, it's really only a little wash of the colors that has gotten in there, and so it's, it's actually still clear.
let's move that in. Alright, so this time this feels like the right paper. I'm going to roll that down. Looks better, doesn't it? Yeah. This time it's soaking in. Actually, I like these colors better anyway. They're a little bit just they've had the edge taken off of them. <laughs> and maybe I'll do one with um, just the black. Be like a black and white photograph. See that ink that I'm collecting off the surface? And again, remember that's optional depending on what you want your background to look like. So I can get the rest of it with this skim. Now the surface is cleaned off. some more water for my clear and some more surfactant so about that much surfactant and my looks like I've got a little draft coming from the window so it blew the ink over that's all right though I'll pretend that I'm starting fresh. So really with the black ink, the both the chiaroscuro and the spumato will be as dramatic as they can get. So chiaroscuro is just basically that dark light interplay and spumato is what's happening when I have added in a little bit of the clear and I start out light but then as I milk my fingers down the brush it blends into a, a darker tone or value. This one.
I'll make another chiaroscuro paper using just the black ink. Unruffled, she carries on. <laughs> Well, the papers are dry, um, so let's just kind of look back through these and enjoy the chiaroscuro effect, the interplay of light and dark in these monochromatic or one-colored papers.
band also in this multicolored, but each band of color within in that band, we've got the same chiaroscuro effect going on. And so um, that concludes this episode. I'm um, delighted that we could share this together virtually, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon as we continue with our explorations in wind and water. Um, what we'll do in the next advanced techniques session is we'll take a look at what what is called overmarbling, and also an application then where I've used the the marbled paper for a drawing substrate. So until then, so long.